the bridge across the River Lee between Leighton and Hackneywick, the historic boundary between Essex and Middlesex and between English law and Dane law. And I'm crossing that bridge this morning and I'm going to take a wander through Hackneywick down towards Stepney Green. And I have to take my film London Overground to the Genesis Cinema down there at Stepney for a screening on the 6th of October. So if you're in London and you can make it, come along. So let's deliver this to Stepney Green via Hackney Wick. I first did this walk, I think in 2007, um, but I went all the way across Hackney Wick into central London and the change since then has been enormous. They were then just starting to fence this off, this area off for the uh, work for the Olympics. And I've done this walk periodically ever since and seen it gradually go through the various stages of transition. So here we are on the map. See, this is the Olympic Park now. We're gonna go over here. There's the new Stratford rising on the horizon, growing day by day, slowly gobbling up the Olympic Park. It's uh, roughly 10 a.m. or just before 10 a.m. rush hour. And not a single vehicle on this road that runs around the edge of the Olympic Park. It's a ghost town. Whereas over here... And the other reason I want to walk through Hackney Wick is that it is one of the next big areas of development in uh, East London, I've been told. As the uh, development of Stratford and the Olympic Park creeps over and sort of gobbles up Hackney Wick, so it's another area under threat. It marks one of the last kind of uh, industrial areas in this part of East London. It's almost like a reminder of what this Olympic Park used to be a bit like, in, in some ways. I wasn't planning to, but I think we're going to have a look at here east. Let's have a look at the uh, the new East London that they've just plonked on us. So the Olympic Media Centre was built on the site of Hackney Stadium, which I think was used for uh, Greyhound Racing and Speedway. one of the things that was uh, demolished to make way for the facilities for the Olympics and now it's this, like I say, it's this kind of tech centre or tech park. I'm trying really hard to not be kind of snarky about the Olympic Park. It's an effort. go. Part of the uh, magic of the Olympic Park is that now Loughborough University, Loughborough is in the Midlands, has suddenly found itself in Hackney Wick. There you go, you'd have thunk it. London's definitely short of universities. This is a whole strange new London, isn't it? East golf carts. It's like a Hollywood studio. And I've just been told the staff here, by the way, have been really friendly. That thing about people stopping you filming. People are quite enthusiastic here. And that here East is an innovation centre, not just tech, it's innovation generally. 
and I was told by the security that uh, that is a theatre there. So this building here is BT Sport. It feels a little bit like uh, London's Milton Keynes. With places like this that are so new, it's interesting to see how long it takes for them to become a place, to develop a character and personality. It's one of the reasons I think I just keep coming down with my camera and logging it, trying to see the point at which that happens. It, it does feel like East Village is starting to, starting to get that, you know. People have been living there now for, what, a year and a half, maybe? Over the bridge there, you've got Hackney Wick proper. You've got one of the poorest parts of London over there, which has been one of the poorest parts of London for quite some time. You know, it's one of the areas that Charles Booth identified as experiencing extreme poverty, and it still does experience extreme poverty. So what your hope is that there are opportunities for the people from Hackney Wick to share some of the uh, wealth that's being generated over here, just over that little bridge. And that'll be the real test of its success for me. The wonderful Hackney Cut. It's tempting to just walk along here this morning in the glorious sunshine, but I am gonna go through the industrial area of Hackney Wick, see what's going on there. This is a really beautiful building, the old Hackney Wick public baths. Hackney Wick is covered with graffiti. They recently tried to replace this with officially sanctioned and uh, commissioned graffiti. Not this particular graffiti, but elsewhere around Hackney Wick. And this is where the first plastic in the world was created. It was called Parkasine. I think it was created as like a waterproof coating for tarpauling. Just think of that plastic invented here in Hackney Wick. So here's an example of one of the new developments abutting the old industrial sites and I think the fear is that a lot of this is going to be lost to uh, new development. At the moment you've still got quite a lot of artist studios in Hackney Wick. It's still one of those kind of creative quarters in London. But, um, yeah, a lot of people are saying that's disappearing quite rapidly as London becomes ever and ever more expensive. A lot of people have left and moved to Berlin, I hear. Of course, some people will say the Lee Valley and East London has always been about change and innovation. And this is just the next phase of change and innovation. I do think it's slightly ironic though that they uh, use the presence of this artist quarter as a selling point for the development of the Olympic Park to appeal to people to move there and of course the likelihood is is that very development will enter to that uh, artist community no longer existing. This is an iconic London location, Central Books, distributor of independent books, key component of the London book trade and support of, sort of self-publishers and small presses. Central Books have moved out to Dagenham kind of been the trend for businesses that have moved out of here, have moved east, further east.
This was a nightclub. I think it was called Noir, and it got recently closed down. And they've been forced out. At least London completely, I believe. And some people are saying this is a growing trend now in East London. Well, actually, a bit of a growing trend in central London as a whole and in East London. Now, I'm going to take that painting there as a reference to the running track that was in White Post Lane. And there was a famous uh, Native American who ran there and became quite legendary. I think there's a plaque on the building. Let's go and have a look. Uh, the plaque is for the uh, Matchbox toy car factory, which was just back up the canal there, which is a great thing. It's not the running track. It was in White Post Lane, I suppose. This isn't White Post Lane. And there's uh, lots of kind of cafes and restaurants and bars and little pop-up takeaway vans all around the wick. Sometimes I think Budlia provides the essential life force of London. Shit house to penthouse is what it says. This should become a list of building. This building works in White Post Lane. Another building site behind these uh, brightly decorated hoardings. Security is a good business to get into in London at the moment. Seems to be a lot of it about. White Post Lane, I think, is where the, the old running track was, where the Native American got a name for himself and became a, a bit of a legend. I'll insert his uh, name and dates on the screen here. Classic 339 bus passing. It's a great bus route. There you go, and there's a whole other city on the other side of the bridge there. Mega city Stratford. The Olympic Stadium. Alien spacecraft plonked down on Stratford Marshes, where West Ham will be playing championship football next year, the way they're going. That's what that stadium was built for, second division football. This is the Hartford Union Canal, opened in 1830, 
and it links the Hackney Cut, the Lee Navigation, with the Regent Canal, and then onwards into the whole National Canal Network. And here's a huge plot of land here next to the canal. I wonder what they're going to build there. I wonder what was there before, actually. I was told by one of the people responsible for the development of the Olympic Park and the surrounding area that the development is going to last for about 20 to 30 years. So that's the plan, anyway. And you can tell already that this area is going to look incredibly different in five, ten years' time. There you go. There's an Olympic legacy for you. Parking for the Games. Supposed to be parking for West Ham now. The walk around Hackney Wick is really narrated by the graffiti on the walls. Optimus Prime Minister. Less flats, more pines, does that say? I like that. Dead bodies and shopping trolleys. New development of uh, apartments at Carpenter's Wharf. Pretty sure the price for these won't be uh, linked to the average wage of the area. Save Hackney Wick. So clearly, this building could be next or this wharf here, it's called Victoria Wharf. A lot of these spaces are artist studios. I know change is inevitable and change is one of the things that's made London a brilliant, vibrant city that it is. But also diversity is one of the things that's made London a brilliant, vibrant space. Not just diversity of people's diversity of activity, of crafts, of trades, of different attitudes and personalities and that's what you risk losing when you just turn everything into luxury flats. H. Foreman and Son, the famous smoked fish people. I think they were over the river in the actual what is now the Olympic Park and managed to successfully argue to be relocated close by because of all the uh, trade they did with restaurants and hotels in central London. Dinosaurs dying wish. I tell you there's not a lot of optimism in the graffiti on the walls around Hackney Wick. So here we have Swan Wharf, Fish Island, and Fish Island's another place that's under threat of being turned into flats. This is Old Ford Lock, so named because it's uh, Old Ford is the old fording point across the River Lee. Going back, uh, well, before the time of the Romans, the Romans built their road across the Lee Valley here. Most of the time they were just improving existing roads. So. so just down there under the Greenway, I think is the point where the Hackney Brook makes its confluence with the Lee. London Centre for Book Arts. Just over there. They run courses on how to do printing. Right, I'm about to cross over over the Greenway. So I think this concludes my tour of Hackney Wick. Going out with a look at Percy Dalton's. And that's the Greenway. Path that sits on top of the Northern Outfall sewer 
and you can follow the sewage all the way along this path to the sewage works at Beckton. So Beckton's amazing, you should definitely go to Beckton if you've not been there. It's where Stanley Kubrick filmed Full Metal Jacket. It doubled as Vietnam. I've just spent two and a half hours walking around Hackney Wick. I'd better get a move on and uh, get my film to the Genesis Cinema. And there's another whole new world of apartment blocks and new development down there going towards the boat flyover. I'll have to leave that for another day I'm afraid otherwise I'm never going to get to the Genesis Cinema. I remember walking past here before the Olympics and I thought there's no way that building's going to survive the Olympics. But it has. Well done. Crown close. So this bridge here follows the path of the old Roman road and predictably leads into a street called, yep, you guessed it, Roman Road. So this is Roman Road today. The Roman Road to the old ford across the River Lee and across the marshes. So I made it here eventually with my film screening on the 6th of October. Come along and see London Overground at the Genesis, Stepney Green.